Okay, quick update on the antique cast iron cap gun I dug up in the last digging video at the 1890 site. It's still bubbling away in the electrolysis bath here, and you can see how that's looking. And if we just get down there real close, check it out, bubbling away. And if you turn your volume up, you may even be able to hear it. That's right, folks. So I'll leave it in there for, I don't know, at least probably another few hours, and uh, then I'll do another update on the results. Might not be in this video, but uh, it'll be in an upcoming one. Hello, YouTubers. <laughs> Thanks for joining me here for another bottle video. My previous three videos have been bottle digging videos. So I'll mix it up a little bit and I'm going to, this one's going to be an unboxing video. Now folks, I still have tote tubs and milk crates full of bottles from the uh, 70s diggers collection that I bought uh, last winter and I'm still working my way through them. Okay, so this is what we're going to do today. I got a milk crate here full of them, and I'm not, I don't know if we'll get through all of them. I'm not sure exactly what's in it. They could be just uh, slick junkers. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, we'll find out once we start hauling them out of the uh, toad here. Uh, what else have we got going on here? Not much, really. Uh, a drink. Uh, get a drink ready if you want one of those. I'll do a little update on the the uh, antique cast iron cap gun. I don't know if I'll put that clip at the start or somewhere in the middle, but that'll be in here. And uh, Alright, so without any further ado, uh, let's start pulling some of these bottles out and have a look at them. So right off the hop, I can see there's a lot of big ones in here. And here's the first one here. Some sort of big old food jar. Nice aqua blue color. And it is blown with a tooled lip. And no base markings on that one. How far up can we go here? How about up there? I'm using my old uh, camera to film this, and it's kind of, I'm not sure how wide the angle is going to be here. First time I've really used it for one of these. Here's a common one. Well, I don't know how common it is, but we see these around quite frequently. A fellow's chemist, St. John, New Brunswick. So that's a, like a local bottle. I know they do dig them up down the states. These things were exported all over the world. Nice blown in a mold with a, I don't know, that's applied or tool. Uh, I guess it's, it's a tooled lip. The seam ends down here. Got a chip in the lip. But anyways, there it is. Beauty. I'll take that, even with a chip lip. There's a little penciler bottle, machine made, this one. I'm not sure what the story is on these. I believe these made penciler was like a beauty product. Correct me if I'm wrong. Feel free to leave a comment and correct me if I'm wrong. And also feel free to leave a thumbs up and tell me what a great, wonderful job I'm doing. <laughs> All comments are welcome. What's this little tube here? This looks familiar. Mrs. Winslow's Soothing Syrup. And then it says something here too, uh, much smaller lettering. The Anglo-American Drug Company, I think that says. Successors to Curtis Perkins Proprietors. We're looking markings on the base there. And that is... I think that's machine made. Must be an early one. Lovely color. Alright. Four down. A few more to go. Alright, well there's a Crawford's Drugstore bottle. St. Stephen, New Brunswick. Local drugstore. Nice bottle. Blown in a mold. Always take the local druggist bottles 
And this collection had a pile of them in it. Well, it's got a pile of them in it. Oh, well, there's another one. This one is from Callis, Maine, though. And it's a Percy L. Lord pharmacist. Callis, Maine. Oh, something just fell out of it there. Don't really want that. Okay. <laughs> and nothing really on the base. Blown in a mold bottle once again. Um, this looks familiar. Yeah, there was lots of these in this collection as well. And here's another one. Odeorn's Beverages. Nice sort of bowl and pin style soda bottle. And these are machine made as well. From Portland, Maine. This company comes out of Portland, Maine. Nice sort of monogram there. They're a nice bottle. Okay, have a drink on me, folks. Um, yeah, before we go any further, there was one other thing I want to show. I think it was two videos ago, instead of doing a, uh, a clean-up slash wrap-up, I did, uh, a couple minutes of my fine shelf, or a minute and a half, or whatever it was, one of my fine shelves, and when I went into my analytics, audience retention, on the fine shelves part, portion of the video, there was a, uh, a spike. So I go to that, and well, this isn't focusing very well, sorry about that, but on that spike, this is the frame that the spike is on. I get focused on that. Just doesn't want to focus. But anyways, as you can see, I'm guessing what people are looking at is that teacher's whiskey bottle in the center of the screen there. So it seems people were interested in seeing that, even though I showed it in one of my other. Uh, unboxing videos, the one with all the labels on them. I'll show it again. Here here it is. Teacher's Highland Cream Whiskey with the original label. It is hand blown with an applied lip. You can see the seam goes right up to the base of this wonky old lip here. And there it is folks. Beauty of a bottle. Check it out. Teacher's Highland Cream. Perfection of Old Scotch Whiskey. Beauty. Set that down. All right. Next up. What's this one here? Okay. I'll leave that. Uh, what's this one here? Sharps Balsam. Nice blue one. I don't know if that's octagon. Might be octagon shaped. But Sharp's Balsam. There it is. Another blown the mold bottle. Lovely color. Sort of got a frosted appearance to it. How many are we up to now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight down. Okay, I don't know how long this video is going to be. I don't want it to be too long, but here's another interesting little, like a chemist jar. There was a few of these in this collection for some reason. Check it out. A few different shapes and sizes of them. No base markings on them. And uh, I'm assuming they're machine made. Thompson's Flavoring Extracts, Dr. Thompson Med Company, hand-blown bottle, no base markings, Thompson's Flavoring Extracts. What's this big honker here? Okay. <laughs> uh, nice old 
applied lip on it, but it's just a big old slicker. That is a big one. Wow. Yeah, big one. Hand blown. S on the base. Where am I going to put that? I'm going to have to set that way up and back here. Um, C.H. Wooden Company, Boston, USA. Spanish gloss. So that's a shoe polish. Nice colored bottle. What the heck is this? Okay, that's just a slicker. No, it isn't a slicker. It's a sperm sewing machine oil. Check it out. Get the light on there. Sperm sewing machine oil. Hand blown. I've only dug up a broken one of those before. At the 1890 site, actually, is where I dug up the broken one. Here's a weird looking, what's this say? Granada. Up around the shoulder here. Never heard of that. Bossed twice up around the shoulder. It is machine made. And some sort of weird base marking. I thought it was the Owens, but it isn't. It's a looks like a G and a square. Or possibly a C. Huh. Any ideas, anybody? I'm guessing it's a whiskey bottle. Next up, little Larkin Company Buffalo Bottle. There's roots growing in that one. I would say this one here is a manganese glass by the looks of it too. I always take the manganese glass ones. I got a... Let's just set that one aside. <laughs> It's not really anything. Here's a here's an interesting bottle. It is hand blown and base embossed. What are the chances I can make that out here on Seeger? Something Seeger? Something limited Seeger? Something and company. Evans, maybe? Seeger Evans and Company? Any ideas, folks? Any ideas? Neat looking bottle. Seeger Evans and Company. Ah, uh, we got... Another Clark's Drugstore. St. Stephen, New Brunswick. Another local drugstore bottle. Always take the local drugstores. Here's a strap side warrant it flask. Hand blown. Tooled lip. I'm almost no, I don't think that one's manganese glass. Doesn't have that look to it. What's this little one down in here? Uh room of foam for the teeth. These turn up once in a while by uh, E. W. Hoyt and Company, Lowell, Massachusetts. Nice little blown bottle. I've dug a few of those myself. Looks like a Rexall hair tonic bottle. We get focused on it. There we go. Owen's uh, maker's mark on the base. I think that lands out somewhere around the 20s. Machine made by the looks of it. Very uh, recognizable bottle when you see them. Here's a, another local druggist. W.H. Clark Druggist, St. Stephen, New Brunswick. The hand blown, beautiful blue color. I just dug one of these up in my previous digging videos. Uh, it was a larger size one. 
at the 1890 site. If you hold on just a second, I'll uh, go see if I can dig that up. Okay, I'm back. And here is the one I dug in the previous digging video. The same video I dug the uh, the antique uh, cast iron cap gun. <laughs> now there's the difference in sizes there. See? But they're both that lovely aqua blue color. Very nice. I'll set that over there by that Teacher's Island cream bottle. A French gloss. Whitmore Boston shoe polish. French gloss. Machine made one. Nothing to get too excited about there. Another Larkin Company Buffalo. Some sort of uh, beauty product, I think. Maybe a cream or lotion. Hand blown bottle. Ah, what else we got here? What the heck is this? Okay, something black in this. And it's got a big old cork on it. And it stinks. Whew. Base embossed. Alright, well there's a, a patent date, January 7th, 1913. Licensed by PFP Company, MD, Balto MD. Huh, no telling what that is. Almost smells like tar. Here's an interesting bottle. Got a lid on it. It looks like it's hand blown too. Cool, nice stopper. All right, George C. Fry, Portland, Maine. I've dug uh, little druggist bottles from there. Cool. Well, that's a nice big uh, jar. Very cool. Very cool, very cool. Here's a little blob. Slug plate. Cork in it. And nothing else. <laughs> Slicker. Alright. Okay, folks. I'm going to have a quick look, see how long uh, this video is so far. And then I'll be right back. Okay, so it's looking like I'm at about 16 and a half minutes. So we'll do one or two more bottles, and then I'm going to call this one done. Here's an interesting looking one. What's that say? Wood, Woodworth. Woodworth on the cap there, folks. Kind of got a gray hue to it. wonder if it's blown. A little jar. No, it looks like it's machine made. But that gray hue kind of tells me that it's probably like 1915, 1925 it's just as a rule of thumb what else we got here uh, what's this one it's a giant Listerine bottle <laughs> machine made, <laughs> look at the size of that bad boy big one, big old Listerine bottle here's one with a neat shape, okay and this one's machine made as well and it is a British troop oil and I see one more. I'll finish this one off. Um, let me pick. There's a few of them in here. Let's go with this one here. It is another giant jar with the stopper. Uh, nope, this one is just TCW and Company. I forget what that stands for, but. And is this one blown? Well, it looks like it's machine made, this one. Still, a nice big jar. Don't no tell them what would have been in that. So that's going to be it, folks. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one. I'm sure the next one will be a digging video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Appreciate everybody watching, commenting, and leaving the thumbs up. Over and out, folks. Have a great day. Once again, thanks for watching. <laughs>